We are doing Extra Life again this year where you can mash buttons, roll dice, play games, and help kids along the way. I hope you'll be a part of that with us. Stick around after the video for more information. Well, my editing skills are crap, but can the same thing be said about Ad Astra? Stick around and find out. <laughs> oh, I got a little dry spot. Maybe it's some popcorn still in my throat. Hey, I'm Peter Franson from ChristianGeekCentral.com and Spirit Blade Productions here with my uncut review of Ad Astra. The synopsis on IMDb. There's two of them, actually. They're both wrong. <laughs> the first one says, Astronaut Roy McBride undertakes a mission across an unforgiving solar system to uncover the truth about his missing father and his doomed expedition that now, 30 years later, threatens the universe! That's the part that's wrong. Everything else was good there except for threatens the universe. It doesn't threaten the universe. It at most threatens the solar system and primarily just threatens Earth. Let's try the second IMDb synopsis. If you scroll down a little bit further on that page. Astronaut Roy McBride, Brad Pitt, travels to the outer edges of the solar system to find his missing father and unravel a mystery that threatens the survival of our planet. Okay, that's much better. His journey will uncover secrets that challenge the nature of human existence and our place in the cosmos. Uh, that's not quite right. Not really. Uh, it just diverges from what most sci-fi movies say about our place in the universe. But I guess depending on who you are, it could present a challenge to your place in the universe or not. I don't know. Anyway, uh, let's talk about the story, the script, the pacing and tone. What is this animal? It's a near-future space drama. So the technology level looks very familiar. The trappings of space travel look very familiar, but the tech is just a little bit advanced, or, you know, <laughs> I guess an astronaut today would say uh, a lot advanced, so that people can make journeys through space um, uh, significantly, significantly faster. And then there's also some questionable things going on with gravity that were never explained. Maybe there's some science behind it, and and that's a, something that hit the cutting room floor. Wish it would have been in there. Anyway, um, it's primarily a drama. And you can get that sense from watching the trailer. And it, it's, it's quiet audibly, but that doesn't mean it's not tense. It's actually, I found it very tense through the almost entire experience. And yet it's also contemplative, as Roy McBride uh, has these inner monologues about his thoughts that we hear. And then also uh, out loud records his thoughts repeatedly as part of these automated psychological evaluations that he has to record himself and take, you know, interfacing with some program. Um, it's a heavily thematic movie, but it's one that you, I think, can also just watch for the story without, like, contemplating the themes. It's, you know, it's about space travel and the dangers of kind of near future space travel, you know, where, where we still have to have big bulky suits and, you know, uh, it, it's not Star Trek, even though, you know, I, I maybe implied that it is with the song I chose at the beginning. Um, but it's, uh, um, you, you very much feel a sense of the the limits of the technology and the fragility of humans in space. Um, it's also about a man wrestling with his unresolved feelings about his dad, you know. It has bursts of danger and these sort of action sequences, but with lots of ominous, quiet suspense in between in these environments that many times seem designed to look a little eerie or, or unsettling in some way. Not in like a Tim Burton eerie kind of way, but more in like a 2001 A Space Odyssey quiet eeriness kind of way you know or you know the movies inspired by 2001 but it doesn't get all trippy and nonsensical at the end so that's I'm I was glad about that there's not much that I can really say without giving spoilers about the story it's a gradual revelation as Roy learns more about his father that has been kept from him as opposed to like a big singular reveal at the end so uh, and I and I think it's best for the viewer to just kind of see those things uh, drip fed out over the course of the movie the, uh, as I said there are some science issues related to gravity that seemed glossed over or even ignored, along with a few other realism issues I had questions about. But, you know, the movie is so dramatically grounded and so character-focused, which I really, really love in my fiction, that after the first 30 minutes, I just shrugged and went with it. I was distracted. In fact, there was some bits of plot and dialogue that I probably missed because I was just distracted by, where's the gravity? Where's the, where's the gravity issues on the moon? You know, I'm not seeing any indications that the gravity's any lighter on the moon. 
<laughs> but I was able to let go of that eventually. Um, as far as the cast, uh, let's see, who did we have in this one? Um, Brad Pitt, uh, who did a really nice job. He spends a lot of the time being quiet. And then we also have uh, most of the time seen through... Um, uh, journal footage, things like that kind of, you know, like a recorded stuff from the past. We've got um, uh, Tommy Lee Jones, who plays uh, Roy's father, and Donald Sutherland makes uh, an appearance as well and does his Donald Sutherland-y thing. Um, so I, I didn't have any complaints, um, not, not just because, you know, these are like stars and stuff, but really because I thought the performances were solid across the board. There was also a guest appearance from the cult leader villain of Far Cry 5, and he looked completely the same, except without the the, uh, the the glasses. I mean, it was like he even had his hair like tied up in a bun and stuff. And I was like, "What is what? What is happening right now?" <laughs> so, as a Far Cry Five player, um, that was a really interesting <laughs> kind of thing. Anyway, moving on to the stunts and visuals, um, it felt very you know realistic to me uh, in in terms of. I mean, the visuals are not like spectacular, futuristic space stuff. Like I said, it, it feels very familiar to what we know of space technology today. Um, but I also thought, in addition to that, the CG itself was uh, really pretty solid. There was probably some CG used to create the, um, the moon rover sequences and maybe all the entire moon rovers themselves. I don't know, but I really was totally willing to buy into them. I was like, I think that uh, most of this or a lot of this that I'm seeing could be totally practical. So, uh, and it's, you know, it's a movie that really is filled with visual effects all over the place all the time, but because it looks so much like current day tech and because I think they really, um, uh, gave attention to try and make the CG look as, as, as real as it could, it came across as real to me for the most part. And I think the drama uh, and the grounded nature of the drama helps the visual effects for me sometimes as well. Um, I don't always comment on the music and sound, but I'll comment on the sound design of this movie. It, as I mentioned briefly before, it's a very quiet movie, but that's usually to represent the vacuum of space. And major disasters that happen in this movie are often kicked off in complete or near complete silence. And rather than rob the movie of intensity in those moments, for me it added to the intensity because the silence constantly reminded me of the vacuum of space that these characters are surrounded by. And the fact that they are so fragile, you know, um, and, and you know, it, humans are really not built to be in space as we are, you know, so it, there was a sense of pressing claustrophobia despite them being in these vast open environments, you know. Uh, as far as themes, is there anything of moral, philosophical, or spiritual significance going on in the themes here that would stimulate some worthwhile thought or conversation? Yes, yes, yes. This might be the most thematically valuable movie I've reviewed this year. Um, there are a few things to touch on. Um, there are several religious people in this movie, and I was uh, surprised that they were not treated as uneducated or hypocrites. In fact, the most religious people are the astronauts, and they're, they seem to be good, virtuous people, you know. And uh, the, the idea of the astronauts being theists uh, actually parallels reality a bit, as some of the most celebrated cosmologists in recent years are theists. Uh, instead, what we see is one character becoming less theistic as he withdraws from people and takes a dark path. Uh, but this is a minor thematic element uh, that I think a lot of people are going to miss. It wasn't something they were pressing and hoping, I don't think, that you would really um, see as a major theme. I actually feel confident that the, the major theme of this movie um, or, or the, the structure is meant to represent the change in perspective that people have about their parents as they themselves reach the age of parenthood. You know, whether you are a parent or not, as you reach the age where you could potentially be a parent, um, more and more I think you gain insights uh, as you uh, about th the way you were raised, as you see the results of different uh, parenting uh, in, in other people's lives around you. And especially if you try to take on parenting a human being yourself, you know, you really gain insights and, and reflect on your own upbringing. And, and based on your feelings of thankfulness or frustration or, you know, very often a mix of both for all of us, you know, about your own upbringing, you see your parents in a different light and you find yourself trying to figure out um, what the relationship with them 
could or should look like at this stage in your life and in their life, you know. Um, the movie also had me thinking about how I'm parenting my boys and, and about the time that I'm giving them or not giving them. Secondly, I think the movie is about isolation versus relational living. And this was the, the, the theme that was really, I think, hammered especially as the movie closed out. Uh, a theme, I mean, this is a theme for geeks if there ever was one. Characters that choose isolation in this movie not only distance themselves from others, but end up horribly hurting other people. And the things that they pursued instead of relationships ultimately fail to bring fulfillment. Uh, this movie, I think, makes a strong statement about the value of the people we have directly, immediately around us on a regular basis, especially our family members. A and it implicitly urges us to make people our highest priority. And this spoke really strongly to me. You know, I have a social event this weekend that I have not really been looking forward to at all. Um, but this movie reminded me that people are so valuable and I had this opportunity, especially in the lives of people I'm regularly, regularly interacting with or regularly have the opportunity to interact with, I have the chance to invest in those people that I uh, spend time with or have the opportunity to uh, often to spend time with. It reminded me of the mission that we have as believers to, second only to God, love people with everything that we have, which in itself is meant to be an expression of our love for God because of how immensely he loves the people around us. He loves people and so he wants us to love those people around us as representatives uh, of him. So uh, this movie really gave me a lot to think about and gave me a sense of purpose as I walked out of the movie theater. I mean, I really couldn't ask for more in that regard. Uh, I have no idea what your tastes are in movies, but if I were a time traveler, I'd go back in time and say, Peter, um, rent this one for sure. You don't need to see it in theaters, and you don't need to see it more than once, but definitely see this one. You love character drama wrapped in a geek genre setting, and that's what this movie is. And you're going to be absorbed in the experience of the movie, and you're going to be improved by its message. So don't miss it. Uh, you can get my spoiler-filled reactions to Ad Astra in my Spoiler Car video series. Just one of many perks available for your support at Patreon patreon.com slash spiritblade productions i put those up the same day as my review the mpaa rating for ad astra is pg-13 for some violence and bloody images and for brief strong language all right those are my thoughts uh, i'd love to get yours in the comments below please like share subscribe click that bell to stay connected i want to thank the spirit blade insiders for making this review possible you can get info about the benefits of joining at patreon.com slash spirit blade productions then i hope you'll join us over at christiangeekcentral.com as we continue to geek out and seek the truth it is time for extra life again and i'd love for you to be a part of it with me here's a recycled but slightly modified promo to tell you more once again this year, Christian Geek Central is participating in Extra Life. Uh, this is a charity that raises funds for the Children's Miracle Network of Hospitals, which provides free medical care to children whose families could otherwise not afford it. And this is very often for critical, life-saving treatment. Joining our team only requires a willingness to ask your family and friends to consider donating toward your fundraising efforts. Participants also usually do something fun and game-related to draw attention to their fundraising efforts, like a, a special game night at your home or your church, or like me you could do a crazy 24-hour video gaming marathon. Now, I'm theming it around video games, but really this, this event can be themed around any kind of gaming, which includes both video games and tabletop games of any kind. What you do to raise funds is entirely up to you, but I would love for you to consider joining the Christian Geek Central Extra Life team. Uh, as team leader, I'll be there to help answer your questions, provide some helpful tips if I can, and just in general be your fundraising cheerleader and try to draw attention myself to your fundraising efforts. You can get more information about the event as a whole at extra-life.org uh, and if you choose to sign up there be sure to select Christian Geek Central as your team so I can get in touch with you and then just help in whatever way I can. Fundraising can begin at any time but our main push is going to be through the month of October leading up to November 2nd. Uh, that's the annual Extra Life game day uh, when I'll be streaming my 24 hour video gaming marathon live and trying to stay awake without throwing up. More details on my live stream as we get closer to it. Uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.